Welcome everybody to another episode of the Nonprofit Show. We are thrilled today to have Anne Marie Doherty, CEO of the Bob Woodruff Foundation. Wow, this is a huge moment for me. I've got to say, Anne Marie, we are really, really honored and excited to have you on. Welcome. Oh my gosh, the pleasure is mine. Thank you for having me. I'm a huge fan of the program and it's an honor to be a guest today. Thank you. Well, it's really going to be fun. I have a, sink, a, a, a sneaky sense that this is going to go by really fast. So um, we have a lot to, of questions to ask you. And so it's going to be a lot of fun. It really, really is. Hey, and we're also joined by uh, Meredith Tarion. Meredith, go ahead and lead us in. Yeah, absolutely. Well, everybody, welcome to another day on the Nonprofit Show. Um, before we get started today with a really interesting conversation with Anne Marie, we want to give a special thanks to all of our sponsors, many of whom have been with us from the very beginning of the Nonprofit Show. So special thanks to Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, a Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraising Academy at National University, 180 Management Group, Your Part-Time Controller, Staffing Boutique, JMT Consulting and Nonprofit Tech Talk. Absolutely. These are amazing partners. And as Meredith said, most of them have been with us from the very beginning. I'm really excited today, Meredith, to have you with us coming to us from Fundraising Academy. But your wheelhouse is really veteran services, right? Yes, it absolutely is. So um, so what's really interesting here, this is I've been looking forward to this conversation with Anne Marie for um, several weeks now. But like you, like you mentioned, Julia, I mean, my whole background has been in the military community. So I was a military spouse myself for the last 14 years. Um, I work almost exclusively with military and veterans nonprofits. And of course, my favorite hat of all is the one I wear here as a co-host of the nonprofit show. Well, we are thrilled to have you with us um, because you really can add a depth of knowledge um, and empathy and intelligence to this conversation. So Anne-Marie Doherty, CEO of the Bob Woodruff Foundation. Holy moly, this is a big job. I just got to say, I'm sure you know that, right? <laughs> yes, it's, but it's an exciting and very fulfilling one as well. Talk to us about what you do and what your work is. Well, the Bob Woodruff Foundation, for those of you who don't know, is a national organization. And our mission is to help veterans and military families have stable and successful futures. Um, not all veterans or service members need help along the way, as Meredith, I'm sure you know, but some do. And our goal is to just make sure that we can link uh, the resources that exist out there and the great generosity of our country to the veterans and service members uh, and military families who need that help. Uh, many people are probably thinking, Bob Woodruff, I know that name, that sounds familiar. Um, ABC News journalist who uh, was reporting on the war back in 2006 uh, was the, was newly named the successor of Peter Jennings, had the top job at ABC News and he was reporting on the ground in Iraq and the vehicle he was in hit a roadside bomb. He was catastrophically wounded. Um, many say it's, it's pretty incredible that he even survived. But for those of us in the military community and military family, we credit that to the bravery of the medics and the soldiers who risked their own lives to save his. Um, Bob recuperated in a military hospital, but he also had the extra support of ABC and Disney, and he had his family at his bedside. And what his family noticed while well, he was in a coma, so he did not notice this, um, no. was just that they had a lot of extra resources and the government was providing incredible health care. Um, but there was a gap for people to be able to leave work and sit at the bedside. You know, we're talking about him recuperating in a hospital with like 19, 18 year old um, combat wounded soldiers and Marines coming home and they just didn't have all that extra care. So the family said, if we, if Bob makes it through this, and at the time, mm. this was a bedside prayer, if Bob makes it through this, our family will do whatever we can mm. to the extent that we can to help this community who saved Bob's life. I have no words. That is really stunning because 
I think it's fascinating that this man and his family at, at really the pinnacle of a career uh, with no military experience would would make this connection. I think about that a lot. And what's amazing is that, you know, we're, it's been 18 years now. So talk about the ethos of, of generosity and gratitude really mm -hmm. authentically. Um, it's really just, it's the spirit of the organization. And it's something that I'm really proud of because everything we do, it, we try to infuse that generosity of, of spirit and ethos of gratitude in how we, you know, navigate through our work and just stay really centered on what the mission of the organization is and the family. I mean, they absolutely didn't have to um, stay as connected, but I think what Bob learned is that, you know, he went from telling the story to being the story, which is not what any journalist wants. Mm -hmm. um, and the family thought, okay, the world is watching our 15 minutes. If we can do something good during this 15 minutes, we will. And like I said, I mean, that was over a decade and a half ago. I don't think that they had any idea the magnitude of one, the need, and two, of the platform that they were able to create. And then uh, it has been, you know, my career's work to build an organization that uh, is governed well and is mission-driven, data-driven, and focused on impact to really be the embodiment of what their intentions are. Amazing. It's it's just, thank you for sharing that. And, and thank you for giving us that glimpse into the how and the why. Um, Meredith, this is your wheelhouse. Help us understand what you're seeing and then let's get Anne Marie's uh, take on this as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think that, um, you know, Anne Marie, you said something really interesting when you were kind of giving us the background and the intro and you said, you know, it's been 18 years now. And I think that first and foremost, that's incredible there to, to have an organization as like the Bob Woodruff Foundation that has just grown exponentially over the years. I mean, it's pretty incredible. And I work with a lot of military and veterans organizations, and many of them are smaller um, and relatively new. So to come across one like yours that has been along for been around for so for so long now, I mean, tell us about that. How has the mission changed over the years? Um, did you have to adapt or adjust to this, the changing state of philanthropy in, in the country? You know, how talk, talk to us about kind of how that evolved over the decades. Now, I'll pick up on the word evolved. I mean, it's definitely been an evolution. We, you know, you don't know what you don't know when you're starting something. I came to the, to the foundation um, from my personal side of being an active duty military spouse at the time. And my husband was getting ready to deploy, you know, it was a very kinetic time in Iraq and Afghanistan. And I just, you know, had kind of like felt like I had idle hands. I wanted to do something. So I really became passionate about making sure that if somebody comes home combat wounded or their family needs something while they're away, are the resources available to support them? And if they are available, is it findable? Is that even a word findable? Um, <laughs> but at the time, you know, we, uh, back then we were talking about the sea of goodwill and there were so many patriotic Americans who wanted to do something to help our military and help veterans and military family members. But to your point, Meredith, they're all shapes and sizes of organizations and um, it became very crowded. There were a lot of organizations doing a lot of things. And then I think if you're a transitioning service member, especially if you were medically separating from the military, you're overwhelmed. You're in a huge life transition. So the last thing you want to do is not be able to find the resources that actually exist out there to support you. So a lot of what the Bob Woodruff Foundation has done, because we had the platform of Bob and Lee, and truly we had some great fortune in the very early days, Bob and Lee, um, Bob woke up from his coma talking about Bruce Springsteen's music and his, his wife Lee had played um, music for him while he was in the hospital in a coma. And the fact that that somewhere in his mind when he woke up was in there and, you know, a friend of a friend gets word to Bruce Springsteen next thing you know, um, through our amazing friends at the New York Comedy Festival, they put together like a huge um, concert to benefit the foundation. And 
it was so successful that that we're actually coming up on our 18th year doing that concert and Bruce Springsteen has showed up for us every year he possibly could. Um, but that gave us, you know, that event that stand up for heroes with the New York comedy festival really put us on the map. So once you have a platform like that, it's almost inverse Meredith to what you would think about growing a nonprofit from, you know, a literal kitchen table operation with the family saying we want to help to then having the opportunity of like, you know, the biggest entertainers in the world and such a huge media profile and access, the work really became what, what can we do to actually help? And the family said, we don't want to be brick and mortar. We're not going to be packing backpacks or, mm -hmm. um, building homes for the homeless. Let's raise as much money and awareness as we can. Um, and then with that money connect with experts and really understand what the unmet needs are. And those needs have evolved over time. And so what we focus on has evolved with it. I love that honesty uh, because I think that's really hard for a lot of organizations to admit that and to, to reevaluate. And I love that word that both, you know, Meredith and you use evolve and how powerful, powerful that is. Um, as we end, when we, we do end, I want to revisit that and, and have you kind of tell us what you think the future is going to be, because if you've gone through this much in this short period of time, um, it'll be really interesting to know kind of what you're thinking about for the future, but let's move on to something that I, I found on your website that I, I was really intrigued by. And it's you got your six network. And that seems like a program that you've really gotten behind. What is that, Michelle? Or Michelle, excuse me, Anne Marie. What does that look like to you? So Got Your Six is basically the embodiment of what I was talking about of being able to, as an individual veteran or service member, or military family member, be able to connect locally to relevant resources to you. At the beginning of this journey of creating the network, um, which it's been about seven years, and this is definitely like full disclosure, it's my baby. It's something I have been working on for years. Uh, I had an idea, others shared the same vision. We tried things um, and where we really landed is, I, at, at the beginning I thought there's gotta be an app for that. Like why can you get off a plane in another country and find a coffee shop, but you can't use your phone to find like really legitimate um, PTSD resources in the town where you live that is gonna be covered by your insurance. Um, there isn't an app for that turns out because uh, we have a huge country and every town is a little bit different. So we embarked, and it has been a labor of love, like I said, my <laughs> baby, uh, to go town by town and figure out, like, who's the mayor of that town, I'm using air quotes, um, mm -hmm. for veteran services. Mm -hmm. And what we discovered is that there is not a one-size-fits-all model. Each town kind of has their own groove. Most towns have something that's working for them where you can show up at the door and get connected to, maybe you're not getting all those services in one place, but you can get connected to employment services, um, housing, legal aid, uh, food, if you're food insecure, and there's usually one door you can knock on and then they're connected. So like the hub of the spokes in each town, we went zip code by zip code. And now I'm going to be a little peacock and brag for a second. So seven years later, we now have coverage in all 50 states, U.S. territories, and of the 21 million veterans and uniformed service members that are in our country, we have access to reach 98.5% of them, and we're missing like 14 zip codes. And um, if you're wondering about that last 14, like, don't worry, I'm on it. They're very rural areas. <laughs> um, but the idea is just that wherever you live, you should be able to get connected to the resources that exist for you. And final point on this is that... Um, a while back, I adopted more of like an abundance mindset rather than a scarcity mindset, which has really helped with fundraising and my ability to lead the company side of like the business side of the foundation through uncertain times um, with, you know, a belief that things uh, are, are going to be positive on the other end. Mm. There are, there are resources out there for veterans and military families. So much of the need stems from lack of the ability to find them. And that really is the genesis and the purpose of the Got Your Six Network. 
Wow, I love that. Um, and I'm I'm curious, Meredith, do you see that in your practice as well? Yeah, absolutely. And what I what I love about the Got Your Six Network, and I'm I'm familiar with it because you know the work that I've done with with so many of the partners that that you're already partnering with. What I love about it though is that you know the Bob Woodruff Foundation is really leveraging the power of networks, right? I mean, you don't feel like you have to deliver all of these services yourself. And I think that's where a lot of nonprofits sometimes sort of handicap themselves. They feel like they recognize a, a need or they recognize you know, a, a scarcity and they feel like they have to be the one to own it and to, to provide that, um, that benefit or service. And what I love about the Got Your Six Network is that you, know, you guys are just bridging the gap here and, and you know, building this huge community, this network of organizations that are working together um, and doing what they do best. So instead of being a jack of all trades, it's like, hey, you're doing this really well in maybe it's transition services or military spouse employment or whatever it might be. And um, and so it's just it's leveraging the power of network and community. And, and I love that. Anne Marie, I'm so um, fascinated. You use the number and I'm going to have you repeat it again. Twenty one million veterans and active service members. Yes, in our country, and we are reaching um, 98.5 percent of them and. The reason that's important is because you have uh, we have some incredible systems, government systems in our country. Um, the VA is a huge resource for veterans all across the world. Um, one of the difficulties the VA has is access and reach to every single veteran, and there's a lot of reasons for that. Some it's stigma of the VA from years past some it's you know the warrior mindset i don't want to ask for help some it's just i didn't know that i was eligible for these benefits um because i don't you know see myself as disabled but there's loan services there's small business opportunities there's um cemetery benefits so there's all kinds of things so the va wants to be connected to every single veteran in our country but they're not they're actually i think at like 60 percent. don't quote me on that number i can fact check that for you but we have a great partnership with the va at the enterprise level because uh to meredith's point and you said that so beautifully so i'm going to listen back to uh this episode because your description is was uh more succinct uh than mine but the idea that if we connect networks, it's networking networks, including the federal government and all the resources that state and local governments provide, then you start to see a picture of what's possible for veterans who, you know, we've got an all volunteer force. So it's people who are volunteering to serve in our military and we're upkeeping the upholding the social contract that if you are in harm's way, we'll take care of your family while you're gone. And if you come home and you need some extra support, you've earned benefits. And we just want to make sure that you have access to them. Mm. So, I so go ahead, Meredith. No, go ahead. I'm sorry, Julia. This is oh. also fascinating. I have like a thousand questions. So, hey, Marie, just one question here. You said early on when we were talking in this conversation today, you said that, you, you know, the Bob Woodruff Foundation really relies on data. What kind of data do you guys collect and how do you use that data? Well, one of the the greatest uh, benefits of building the Got Your Six network was the ability to create a national sample set. So we have over 350 active partners in the Got Your Six network. And the no, stick with me, the network of networks. So that's representative of over 10,000 different organizations. So a national organization like the Bob Woodruff Foundation with the um, researchers and academics on our team are able to go out and survey the partners. And the main thing that we've looked at is essentially a needs a national needs assessment that can be sliced and diced down to the zip code. Um, so what we do is go out to the Got Your Six partners and say, what are the top needs that veterans or um, family members are walking through your door? What are the needs that they are that they have? Um, and give us that information. And then, and this is what fascinates me. What is your organization's ability to meet that need? So then there's, in all cases, a delta. Looking at that and then being able to splice and dice that ge geographically 
based on an issue. So you could say to me, what's the number one issue for veterans in America? And I could say it is uh, housing instability. You could say, well, there's a housing crisis in our country. And I could say, absolutely. These needs are um, mirroring national trends, but are exacerbated for the veteran community. And here's the top three reasons why they, they uh, mental health. Da, da, da. And so you really start to see that there's um, interconnectivity, but the power of this is that we can get a national sample set and then be able to slice and dice it. So to answer your question more directly, Meredith, some of the things we can do is arm our policymakers with information that's relevant to their district. We're a non-political organization. We um, non-political, non-partisan, but we can share the research and it uh, is really useful. It's also useful to funders. They want to know that what they're funding is going to make a difference. So if you say, I really care ab about supporting veterans, but I want to make, and I want to make a big donation, but I want it, I want to know that it could move the needle. And I live in this state, we could say, well, here's the number one issue in Florida. Um, let's direct it to that. And then we have the ability to give to measure the aggregate impact. And I think that's what a lot of um, donors and funders are looking for. Amazing. And, and I love that. And Meredith, you know, to me, when I hear Anne-Marie talk about this, this is like the perfect d direction that our sector needs to take. We need yeah. this more intellectual data-based um, approach and mindset, right? It, I mean, yeah, talk about talk about high, uh, you know, high impact here. I mean, I think a lot of nonprofits identify the problem, but a lot of them tend to stop there. They identify the problem, but they're not quite sure how to address the problem or even what the root cause of the problem is. What I love about what you just described, Anne-Marie, is that, you know, this is a focus on, um, you know, what is the root cause of the problem? And then, like you said, you take the data, you take it to Congress, you're able to make systemic policy changes that affect, you know, you're, you're dealing with, like you said, I think the number was 21 million uh, people. I mean, that's a big number. It's not a one size fits all approach. So you, you, you can't address it, you know, without having that network and that partnership. So the, the work you you're doing is so incredible, but I, I, I love the got your six network. I'm familiar with it. And I think it's just, it's really high impact work. It, that's amazing. You know, we don't have a lot of time left. Um, but I want to kind of drill down a little bit more as we we navigate towards the close of our show, which I, I mentioned this, Anne-Marie, it goes by fast. <laughs> 30 minutes is not enough time for you, my friend. But how can nonprofits, you know, really navigate toward in partnership with you? You mentioned that, you know, you're so ding dang close to getting, you know, that that service area completed. But what is it that you're looking for and what could a nonprofit, how could a nonprofit match up with you all? Well, there's a, there's a lot of opportunities. I believe in a galaxy of partners, like a more is more big 10, you know, uh, we can do it together kind of uh, attitude. So for not, some non nonprofits that are working in social services, there's certainly an opportunity for funding. So we go out and raise money and then we are grant making annually. If you're part of the Got Your Six network, there are opportunities for funding. There's opportunities for scholarships to go to major national um, uh, conferences. And there's opportunities to participate in the data survey. And then we'll give you the data that's relevant to you where, where you're based. So you can be more um, specific with how you're interacting with folks on your end to, to raise money. And uh, whatever, however else it might be useful. So we are open for business um, for grants applications. And then this is really niche, but I just want to put in a little plug. We uh, have a program called Viva, which helps kind of meet the need of veterans who whose uh, fertility was affected by their service. It's really niche, um, but we have an open all year round, no deadlines uh, application for veterans who are seeking fertility assistance to get grants um, to uh, help them start a family. And that's a really bespoke program. But I feel like every time I have the opportunity to be somewhere like this, there's at least like one person who heard me that said, oh my gosh, I you know, was putting uh, my medical treatment on my credit card and I don't know what's next. So Bob Woodruff Foundation is here for you for that. And um, we do events and all kinds of things. So I say, 
please connect with us. I'm sure there's a way that we can uh, partner up. And we're also always trying to learn. So if you know something that we don't, definitely want to hear hear about it. I love your spirit of collaboration and your spirit of engagement. Um, I, I find that um, you have been very transparent in the journey and, and, you know, saying where you've been fortunate, where you've had to struggle. It's, it's very interesting to hear this story. Um, and I got to ask this question again, we don't have a lot of time, but being that you've in, you've experienced this meteoric rise in attention and in delivery, what's the future for you? Like, what's the next five, 10 years look like? Well, I wish I had a crystal ball. <laughs> uh, we've got an incredible board of directors and one of our board members was the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, so he, General Marty Dempsey. So that's like the highest ranking general in the country. Uh, it sounds like I'm bragging, but I'm not. I, but he always said at every single board meeting, Henry, what's over the horizon? What's over the horizon? What's over the horizon? And he embedded in our management and leadership team uh, is a, a posture of readiness to be ready for what's next, to be looking for what's over the horizon. I mean, you can look around the world and say something's afoot. And when there are global conflicts, there is a direct, direct impact on how we um, pursue our work because we're always trying to rank what the needs are. Um, so I, and I think this is advice for anyone running uh, a nonprofit or really any business for that matter to just make it part of your business practice to be in a posture of readiness, thinking about what's next. And I certainly, certainly, certainly attribute that attitude to our ability to navigate through the COVID pandemic, make some important decisions really quickly so that we could just stay mission focused. And um, even though I don't know what's next, I'm trying to be ready. I love it. I think that, I mean, Meredith, don't you think that's like the way we should all be thinking in the nonprofit sector? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, it's that strategic vision towards the future. That's really what, you know, what moves things along. And like I said earlier, you know, to, to an organization, a nonprofit that's like successful and, and uh, you know, um, impactful, the Bob Woodrow Foundation, you, you guys have been here for 18 years. I mean, that in and of itself is, a, is really a testament to your leadership and to your board um, and to your strategic direction. So it's it's just incredible. It's really good work that you guys are doing. This was this was a, this was an exciting conversation today that we had on the show. Yeah, I mean, we, we're we just thrilled, Anne-Marie uh, Doherty, that you would be here and share with us. Um, Anne-Marie Doherty is CEO of the amazing Bob Woodruff Foundation. You can find them at bobwoodrufffoundation.org. The website is really, it's incredibly robust from the vantage point of someone needing service or connectivity to somebody trying to educate themselves or learn about the process. And I was really struck um, by the, the website, Anne-Marie, that this was a family that had this thrown at them, did not think of this as, as a core uh, family mission, if you will, or, or personal value. And then their whole lives were switched and that they have navigated through this and, and both Lee and Bob Woodruff has, have really, um, it's like almost like they were put on the planet to do this and they didn't know it until they were thrown in in it. It's very, very interesting to, to learn about them. And you can certainly visit bobwoodrufffoundation.org and, and learn all about it. Um, what a thrill. It's really been fun, hasn't it, Meredith? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what, what an incredible conversation today. Before we close out, we just want to give a special thanks to our sponsors again, um, Blue Meringue, American Nonprofit Academy, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraising Academy at National University, 180 Management Group, Your Part-Time Controller, Staffing Boutique, JMT Consulting, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. Special thanks to all of you, many of whom have been with us from the beginning, and we wouldn't couldn't do it without you. We couldn't. You know, as we end every episode, um, we sign off with this mantra. And and Anne-Marie, I say this all the time, but it means different things to me, depending on who the guest has been. And uh, and so we end with this message. And the message is to stay well so you can do well. Thank you so much, ladies. This has been magical. Anne-Marie, keep up the good work, my friend. <laughs>